Hey everyone, Ben Yunsen here. Thank you for joining me. Let me know if you can hear me okay. We'll start off with some playing. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Hey everyone, it's wonderful to see you here already. Hey Joe. And yeah, make sure to hit uh, like and uh, that would help push the video about out a bit more, I, I think anyway. Hey Craig, thanks for joining us. Guitar Lots, great to see you. Let me play for you a little bit more. Wonderful to see you all. Hey, Craig, Chad, Rob. Thank you for my lessons. Of course, I'm glad to provide them for you. And I hope you enjoy them. Hey, Jason from Stuttgart. Fantastic. I think, Rob, I saw you a moment ago. Henry, can you play that at 690 BPM? Might need a bit more time to work on that, but it's a good question. <laughs> Some wonderful questions coming in. So, hey everyone, keep letting me know where you're tuning in from. Hey Danny, great to see you. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, one of the most practical lessons that I've come across in terms of guitar playing. And I kind of learnt it on the job. We're not so much going to be talking about music theory or soloing concepts or 16th or 30 note, 32nd note lines. Uh, those, 
things are very important and we'll certainly talk about them more on another occasion. But today, um, yeah, this, this relates to accompanying other people and just how important that is, not only to your musicality, musicality, pardon me, but also to your career potentially as a guitarist and being employed and, and making money as a working musician, which I think is really important and, and not talked about enough. So let me just play a bit more for you while you're all tuning in. Hey, Urs, great to see you. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about it in a moment. So before we get into this furthermore, um, I would like to thank you all for supporting my channel. I see so many of you every time I come on here and do a live stream and it's just fantastic. I, I really appreciate your support. Um, my small channel here uh, is, it doesn't have any sponsors and it's with your support that I'm able to keep doing this and having playing videos and lesson videos and all this kind of stuff. So. Uh, to keep delivering high quality material for you, I'd love it if you could join me as a member on my channel or consider supporting me at uh, bensguitarclub.com and my classic online store at benyunson.com where this weekend you can get 10% off everything, including my new stuff, with the code uh, MAY 2023. And that'll be just this weekend and it includes my latest modern soloing bundle with six master classes taught by me, written by me, presented and edited and all that by me uh, with uh, over 90 video lessons. Also includes the how to practice bundle and the mini lesson bundle over at my classic benyunson.com store. So if you want to get learning guitar and uh, developing your skills with what I can impart to you, make sure to get 10% off at bensguitarclub.com and benyunson.com today and tomorrow. So make sure to use that code MAY2023, so check it out. So today we're gonna to be talking about a contemporary style of rhythm guitar playing that I like to call melodic rhythm guitar. You might have heard this style a lot in contemporary jazz and R&B and soul influenced music. And it draws uh, heavily from a classic chord melody approach often heard in the realm of classic jazz guitar and it often sounds a little bit like this you know this kind of stuff with the hammer-ons and the pull-offs sometimes these days it's it's referred to as i suppose neo soul guitar but i, I think what i'm going to do is trying to go a bit deeper than that thinking all the way back to classic jazz guitarists from the late 40s into the 50s people like barney kessel johnny smith and certainly as time wore on, uh, Wes Montgomery and um, George Benson uh, being such a wonderful example of someone who could play these kinds of double stops and chordal ideas with hammer-ons and pull-offs, it really does come from a classic jazz guitar sound. And yeah, utilizes these kinds of hammer-ons. <laughs> slides. Mm. 
comes from the beautiful chord melody stylings of classic jazz guitar. And if you haven't really heard a lot of that kind of playing, sometimes a great place to start is the classic album Moonlight in Vermont by uh, Johnny Smith from the 50s, which, um, though certainly a little bit different to the melodic rhythm guitar approach that I'm talking about, um, definitely laid some of the foundation for this type of chordal playing. So I think that's really important history to know. Now, for me personally, you might know me best as a guitar soloist who plays all these lines, you know. And I think that's just so important to have an improvisational language, a soloing language on guitar. However, I have found myself in many musical situations where I have been playing a uh, rhythm guitar or accompanying people as a guitarist in many circumstances. And guitar lots I see uh, Lenny Bro, another wonderful example of what I was talking about with that classic guitar sound. Uh, I think Lenny Bro sort of doesn't get his due even, even these days, just a wonderful guitar player. Um, yeah, and I've found myself in situations where I was performing with uh, many different artists of, uh, you know, different musical stylings. I toured for a number of years with the wonderful drummer Terry Lynn Carrington, drummer, producer, music director, you name it. Um, and throughout all the, the broad array of styles that we would play, there would be music where I would be required uh, musically to accompany in this manner. <laughs> including other artists like uh, Queen Latifah and Layla Hathaway and the great Valerie Simpson and so many more wonderful artists that I played with where it was my job to uh, play this particular style of guitar playing and sort of be a bit of a musical painter, if you will, in the background, adding where I could to the overall landscape of the musical situation that you're playing in. And a lot of my employment uh, as a guitarist, as a working guitarist, um, depended on me being able to employ this melodic rhythm guitar approach. And this brings me to the topic that we're going to be discussing today, uh, which is one of the biggest lessons that I have learned as a guitarist, is that you can be the greatest soloist in the world, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get the gig, so to speak. And I think it's a very important thing to know. Um, being a guitar soloist is probably the cornerstone of what I do and, and I love it and I love that I get to do it. But if you can't accompany other musicians or other people, you, you probably won't get hired. Uh, certainly when you're playing in other musical situations, you might end up being a soloist for maybe 10% of the time. Now that's a very important 10% of the time, you have to be able to do it. But 90% of the time, there's a good chance that you might be, when you're playing with other people in a project other than your own, you might be standing off to the side accompanying others. And I think that this is really the make or break skill that often determines whether or not you get hired. And um, I think making a living as a musician is really important. <laughs> if you're going to be a, a working musician playing with other people. And in my case, uh, making yourself as versatile as possible to ensure that you'll be hired will put you at a huge place of advantage in uh, your career as a guitarist. I, I can't make any guarantees, of course, but this was certainly the case for me. So some of you have asked me about my latest masterclass, which is called 20 Melodic Etudes for Rhythm Guitar at bensguitarclub.com. And you may wonder, why am I talking about rhythm guitar? I'm best known as a soloist. And uh, this is not so much just to plug my latest online course, but more so because I thought this might be a valuable resource in terms of actually using material that might get you hired on the gig. So I'm talking about material where you might be playing over, let's say, an A flat minor seven chord. And you want to know some material where you can sort of slide around on the guitar neck. And 
it's this type of material that, well, it's wonderful to be a soloist, but if you can really do this type of material whilst playing behind a great singer or a great soloist, it's often the thing that I've found will be the make or break in terms of people wanting to work with you. Making sure that you can play some contemporary styles of guitar convincingly and making it sound really good. So I discussed this in great depth in 20 melodic etudes for rhythm guitar at bensguitarclub.com and I, I suggest you check it out because I think it's one of the most important approaches because being a soloist is great but uh, being able to accompany people is possibly worth its weight in gold. And I think it's also important to analyze where this style of guitar playing has come from. You know, we've talked about the uh, original sort of 50s, late 40s, 50s jazz guitarists, uh, Barney Kessel, you'll hear doing a version of this type of stuff, a very old school version of it with some of the chordal material. Johnny Smith, Tal Fowler, Lenny Bro, of course, Wes Montgomery had his own universe. And George Benson uh, contributed a whole lot with his way of playing octaves. a George Benson octave which is a little bit different to a Wes Montgomery octave which is more of the thumb which is also beautiful but there was a certain array of guitarists particularly in the 70s who really pioneered this style of what I like to call melodic rhythm guitar playing and that was sort of in the West Coast and East Coast uh, United States recording scenes of the 1970s. Guys on the East Coast uh, like Eric Gale and Cornell Dupree and also Steve Kahn a little bit later who played on a lot of pop and rhythm and blues records of the time. Um, on the West Coast you had uh, David T. Walker, the great David T. Walker, um, who played on so many great records um, including playing with the, the Love Unlimited Orchestra and stuff like that. Uh, Ray Parker Jr. Um, Jay Graydon, who we know to be a wonderful soloist primarily, but also was a very prolific rhythm guitar player on many records, as was Lee Rittenau, who is also probably best known as a soloist, but uh, was certainly the rhythm guitarist uh, when you listen to um, certain tracks by the Brothers Johnson, Strawberry Letter uh, 23, you know, um, listen to the album Give Me the Night by George Benson, that's Lee Rittenauer playing rhythm guitar. And this to me is where uh, this particular style, well it had its period of real birth in the 1970s and it's only grown from then and has really become even more of a solidified style unto itself in a modern musical setting. So that's why I think that this is such an important approach, melodic rhythm guitar. Having a few things under your belt which you can play over any chord. Yeah, and I discussed it in great depth in my latest Masterclass 20 Melodic Etudes for Rhythm Guitar. And it's showing you my entire approach to this style of playing, which in my case kept me employed for a good long time. Uh, of course, being a great soloist, I think helped in that department too, but being able to accompany people is very, very important. So yeah, let's get to some questions. Let's get to the chat. Henry mentioned Paul Jackson Jr. Of course, have to mention Paul Jackson Jr., who I think really rose to prominence, particularly in the 80s, uh, you know, for sort of single line. Um, all that kind of stuff uh, without the delay lines on, of course. But uh, yeah, um, so many wonderful guitarists who contributed to that sound in the 70s and 80s and I think it's really continued um, 
yeah, continued to this day to become its own style. Henry, uh, you've asked me, Ben, can you please play a tune with this type of style? Well, it would be difficult to play it right now, but I actually wrote a tune on my channel, uh, which you can look at, uh, called Ocean Road. And um, it was a track that I wrote to demonstrate an Ibanez guitar, uh, which are called the AZES. And um, I played um, a number of rhythm guitar parts on that track, which sort of resemble part of this style that I'm talking about. So you can certainly check that out. Um, but I also made another video recently where I talked about uh, rhythm guitar fills, and you can check that out on my channel where I gave you a taste of some of the examples in, in real time uh, where you can uh, hear this type of thing. And much like I played a moment ago, it's really where you have sort of, let's say, an A-flat minor 7 chord. And you're making sure that you're getting the most out of utilizing harmonized pentatonic scales and material like that. And for the most part, I try to stay away from uh, some of the more cliched sounds like this stuff. Because it's been, it's been done to death a little bit, but um, nonetheless there is a time and a place for it. And there is a way to apply it over certain chord progressions that I think is really important. For example, if you're throwing into the mix an alter dominant chord. Okay, there we have D flat, 7 sharp 5. You can use one of those very same hammer-on techniques to really emphasize the sound of that altered dominant. And then resolve it to the one. All that kind of stuff. And you can hear it very distantly uh, being related to, or maybe not so distantly, being related to George Benson and the kind of stuff that he'd play so masterfully, um, but utilized in a rhythm guitar context. And I really just can't emphasize enough the importance of rhythm guitar. You may not have heard me here on my channel at least, or in my recordings, utilizing this style a lot, but certainly when I found myself playing, um, okay, here's an example. A number of years ago, I did an amazing show at the Hollywood Bowl with so many luminaries of, of uh, music, uh, Patty Austin I was playing with, um, Ledacy, um, wonderful, wonderful singers at the Hollywood Bowl. I'm uh, trying to recall everyone I played with, but um, the percussionist on that particular gig at the Hollywood Bowl was the amazing Bobby Hall. And if you know who Bobby Hall is, she played on uh, Hajira by Joni Mitchell, played on a lot of the Motown sessions in Los Angeles, um, and uh, Motown Sessions full stop uh, in the 70s, one of the great percussionists of all time. And what an honor to work with her and everyone on that particular show. And uh, I was playing some of this type of material and, and Bobby Hall paid me a huge compliment and came up to me and said, you know, when you play that stuff, it reminds me of David T. Walker, the, the, the great guitarist. And that was a huge compliment to me because to be, to be able to hang in there with this kind of playing, as I like to call it, melodic rhythm guitar playing, and for a, a legend such as Bobby Hall to, to mention that to me, um, it really meant the world to me. It meant that I, I was uh, doing my job properly. So that's an example of, of where, well, just one example of where I was able to use that uh, successfully on a, an am amazing gig where Bobby Hall was playing percussion, Patrice Russian was uh, playing piano, Patty Austin, so many luminaries of, of modern music. And um, this was the particular style of guitar playing that I was hired to play. So I think it's, it's really important. So I think uh, if you'd like to learn this style more, you can check it out at uh, bensguitarclub.com in 20 Melodic Etudes for Rhythm Guitar. 
So let's do some questions in a moment, but, but once again, to recap, the, the whole point of this discussion is that the, one of the biggest lessons I learned is that you can be the greatest soloist in the world, and that'll be fantastic, especially if you want to play your own original music. But if you want to possibly get hired as a guitarist playing alongside other people, you need to be able to accompany other musicians, singers, uh, you need to really be able to play with other people. I think it's so important. Um, being the fastest gun on the guitar will uh, turn a lot of heads and that's good. Um, but being able to play some beautiful melodic fills behind someone else, well that'll do more than turn a lot of heads if you want to get hired. So that's what I've learnt. Alright, let's jump into the comments here, into the questions and, and see what you've got to say. Hey Henry, uh, if I'm teaching this, uh, you'd like to know where to buy it, um, you can get it right here, my uh, moderator today, Vienna Lorraine, say hi to Vienna everyone in the comments, in the chat, uh, has put the link right here and you can get 10% off today with the code MAY2023. Um, so make sure to check out this link right here if you're interested in checking it out. So what else do we have here? Um, yes, yeah, I, I agree, Lenny Bro is criminally underrated. Um, let's see. Frank Gambale is a good example of this. Well, Frank uh, Gambale is, uh, you know, such a wonderful guitarist. He's a very versatile guitarist and being a, a, a tremendous soloist in his own right. I, th I think you're correct that uh, Frank is such a great soloist in his own right and we know him and love him for that, of course. Um, but Frank is also very versatile and, and does a wonderful job playing acoustic guitars, playing rhythm guitar parts on some of his albums. Um, and of course, with the classic Chick Corea recordings he played on as well many years ago. But yeah, Frank is incredible, incredibly versatile, so you're right, a great example. Uh, Binky Warren, hey, great to see you. Patrice Russian is a great singer. Forget Me Nots has always been a personal favorite. Yeah, it was, it was just an honor to play with Patrice um, that time and, and at the Hollywood Bowl, which was a dream of mine, I think a bucket list thing of my life to get to play on that stage. And, uh, you know, just an honor to be in the, the company of, um, of such amazing musicians. I was 26 at the time and um, yeah, I was definitely uh, on the edge of my seat a little bit, but, um, but what a fantastic experience. And I've been very fortunate to play alongside some of the greats of, of music history here in the United States. So what an honor that was and has been. Hey, Samuel, um, love my playing. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate that. Um, do you have any advice on comping over static harmony? Um, absolutely. Well, that's, that's another realm of accompaniment. I'm really glad you asked about that. We're, we're going to talk about that another time because I suppose this today is a bit more of a, um, a contemporary style of guitar playing that relates a bit more to contemporary jazz, R&B, and soul-influenced music. And, um, but playing over static harmony in sort of probably a more jazz improvisational setting, you know. You know, we're definitely going to get into that another time and you do raise a very great question, but the, the bit of information I'll give you for now is listen to McCoy Tyner's comping with John Coltrane or in any setting really and see if you can apply that to the guitar. <laughs> that helped me a lot. Hey Danny, um, what are some good records which feature this type of rhythm guitar style? Well, you can go all the way back to the 70s and listen to I Want You by Marvin Gaye. That is such a wonderful example of this type of guitar playing. Um, if you really want a concentrated dose of it, you can go back and listen to the solo records of people from the 70s and not strictly the 70s, there are a lot of uh, younger guitarists these days who do a wonderful uh, job of this, um, you know, who you'll hear on records by D'Angelo, um, certainly in the last decade. 
Um, but if you want to hear the sort of genesis of it in its modern form, go back and listen to First Course by Lee Rittenauer. Go back and listen to uh, uh, Multiplication by Eric Gale. Eric Gale was a great one who played on so many of those wonderful... Eric, no one talks about Eric Gale anymore, uh, probably because he has not been with us for, you know, 30 years, I think. Um, but such an underrated guitarist who played on this type of uh, stuff. Um, the great guitarist Al McKay uh, played this type of material. Um, who else? You can hear Larry Carlton on the Crusaders records in the 70s as well doing this. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll come up with a, a lengthier list of of uh, albums, but certainly in more recent years, in the last 20 years, you can listen to albums by Jill Scott, you can listen to albums um, even by a band like uh, Snarky Puppy, and you can hear elements of this guitar style being utilized, and you hear it a lot uh, in a lot of pop music and contemporary music these days, so I hope that helps. So what, do we ha what else do we have here? Um, yeah, so this sounds like a, a lot of double stops and R&B guitar playing. Is there a more modern jazz approach to this? Well, that's the thing, Henry. It's a very good question you raise because uh, in this particular um, masterclass at bensguitarclub.com, uh, it is focusing on an R&B inflected style, but it's also talking a lot about how to deal with this over altered dominant chords, which does probably relate a little bit more to jazz. It's uh, certainly something you hear in a lot of contemporary jazz music as well, um, not strictly pop music. Um, but yeah, there's a lot in um, section two and also section four where we talk about how to apply this to uh, altered dominant chords and then how to apply this type of playing over a two, five, one in G flat major. <laughs> really how to handle connecting this material going through a 251 including all the altered dominant sounds so it perhaps has more to do with contemporary jazz styling of guitar uh, but definitely can also be used in pop and contemporary R&B that kind of stuff too so hope you can check it out and enjoy it and get something out of it Hey, Jordan, how am I? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. I really appreciate it. So I'm going to do a tiny bit more playing for you, and then we're going to call it a day here. But uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. It's been great fun talking to you, as it always is. And uh, yeah, we'll just play a little bit more for you, do a couple more questions, and then that'll be it. Thank you so much. <laughs>
hope you enjoyed that little impromptu solo guitar for you. So yes, let's leave it there everyone. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe I'll come on another time and do a little solo guitar concert for you. Um, if you like that, let me know in the comments in the chat here. But um, yeah, it's always wonderful to play for you and um, certainly great fun. So yeah, a couple more questions. Hey, Az, thank you for tuning in. Wonderful to see you. Um, let's see, Henry. Yes, it is 20 melodic etudes. That's it. Absolutely. Wonderful. Walking through the park and listening to the chilly sound. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, what's my personal favorite guitar that I've been playing lately? Well, it's actually this one. I, I've got such a wonderful array of guitars these days, but I got this one set up in such a way that it just plays so perfectly. The, the string height's perfect, and as of now, I'm, I'm really loving this particular guitar, which um, is my Frank Brothers guitar hand built and I'm very lucky to have one. It's just wonderful. So yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying this one of late. Um, and I did another video um, on my channel if you're interested in hearing about it. Yes, uh, uh, you'd like to hear a Ben concert. Well, we'll, we'll certainly do that at some point in the future. Righto, everyone. Thanks for joining me. It's always a pleasure to have you joining me from all over the United States, all over the whole world. I know that we get people tuning in from everywhere and I know a bit about that because I'm Australian, as you know, and um, uh, have been living in the United States for quite some time now, but it's, it's just such a blast to have all of you uh, join me from everywhere that you are. So before we finish today, remember melodic rhythm guitar. The whole point is that uh, one of the biggest lessons I've learned is you can be an amazing guitar soloist. And that is so important, of course. And I think it's really my, what I'm best known for and I think what I'm best at. But you've also got to be a great accompanist. You've got to be great at accompanying other people. And I think, certainly for me, that's been worth its weight in gold for me. So... Uh, you can learn all about it in my latest masterclass, 20 Melodic Etudes for Rhythm Guitar at bensguitarclub.com. And it's also part of the Modern Soloing Bundle. And you can get 10% off this weekend. It ends tomorrow. Um, we're not going to be doing too many more of these promos. Uh, so you can get 10% off with the code MAY2023. And um, yeah, I'd love to have you join me at bensguitarclub.com and we'll get practicing together. And you can always contact me um, here on my YouTube channel. I'll do my best to get back to you and contact me through my website and uh, if you have any questions. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, I will uh, see you all very soon. And I hope you had fun today. I certainly did. I'll see you later. Yes, and there you go, Vienna. Uh, our wonderful moderator today has put that in the link in the chat if you're interested. So make sure to check it out. 10% off everything at benyunson.com classic online store for my how to practice bundle, mini lesson bundle, and my albums. And 10% off at bensguitarclub.com including the modern soloing bundle and everything else with the code MAY2023. Thanks again, everyone. I always appreciate your support and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. And maybe we'll do a solo concert. See you later. Bye.